But Dr. Betty Washington Green was indeed a pioneer uh, in chemistry. She was a trailblazing chemist, and she was born and raised in Texas. Earned her undergraduate degree from Tuskegee Institute, which is now known as Tuskegee University, a HBCU in Alabama in 1955. And in 1960, she came here, enrolled in the Department of Chemistry, and in 1965, earned a PhD in physical chemistry uh, under the direction of Professor Wilfred Heller. And so her research focused on uh, determining particle sizes in various uh, solutions and materials. And so she was one of a handful of African American women to achieve that at that time. So she was a rarity. And so after graduating from here, she went on and uh, joined the Dow Chemical Company, becoming the first uh, hired in all of the chemical industry. So she was the absolute first. And that's a wonderful historical fact, but that's not why she matters. She matters because of her scientific contributions, just like anybody else. And I want to talk about that a little bit. But what I what I really found really fascinating was this, was this family legacy in STEM. You know, for her daughter uh, to earn a doctorate in, in physics uh, from the University of Chicago in 1988, that's pretty fascinating because it's rare that you see a mother and a daughter both earning a doctorate in a STEM discipline, let alone two women of color. We all know that really publications are the currency of science, right? And so it's important to publish your research. And she published in high impact journals which have been cited today. And I'm just highlighting a couple of them and I really wanna focus on the first one which is a paper that she co-authored with her, her PhD advisor, Professor Heller in 1966. This paper uh, was recently cited as early as this year, last year in the journal Fuel and also in 2016. And what that tells you is that the work that she did so many years ago is still very significant. Okay, this is why she's important and why she matters. But when she was hired by Dow in 1965, Dow was actually focusing on uh, the styrene butadiene lactate material for a variety of different applications. And so from what I understand, these particular materials, it's really important that you, uh, you have uniform particle sizes. This is why the Dow Chemical Company hired her, because she had expertise in determining particle sizes in various materials. And she actually invented these improvement processes, right, that led to commercial products in the carpet industry and in the paper industry. That's why she's important. So I served as an editor of this, uh, this new ACS Symposium book series that I had the opportunity to interview uh, her daughter as part of uh, this particular, uh, as part of this particular chapter. And so we wanted this to be more than just a history book. I'm thankful for all of the contributing authors. There are lesson plans aligned with various disciplines in chemistry that educators can use in the classroom. In organic chemistry, of course, is the best discipline ever. <laughs> no shade to my organic brothers and sisters. Okay. <laughs> but within this uh, chapter, I talk about uh, um, the small numbers of African American women that earned degrees in doctors in chemistry during her time period. And between 1947 and 1975, there were 11. So she was a rarity, okay, as, as I said. But really, another important, broader message here is that beginning with Dr. Marie Maynard Bailey in 1947, there have been, there has just really been, uh, African American women have earned doctors in chemistry just for 75 years. And that's not that long when you look so this is a powerful legacy in, in, uh, in chemistry. So the book chapter was actually the basis of a new, uh, a new documentary, which was written, directed, and produced by one of my former students, Moby Danaher. Uh, it's on YouTube uh, as well. It's an eight-minute documentary. And featured in this film is uh, interviews with her daughter, uh, Dr. Christine Chow and Dr. Uh, Dr. Allen. So we're using this film. Uh, as a way to uh, engage the public. Um, we're gonna use it for a professional development workshop for Midland Public School teachers in February as well to use uh, in the classroom. And I'm also collaborating with Dr. Chow and Dr. Allen and also Dr. Mark Jones who recently retired from Dow. We actually uh, submitted uh, an application for a landmark applicant to honor Dr. Green with a landmark from the uh, Natural Historic Chemical Landmarks uh, Committee. So this is, uh, I serve on the subcommittee. This is a, a, a national uh, subcommittee with uh, the American Chemical Society. 
So last week, the landmark application was approved, and so that's a first hurdle. So then, yeah, so, so the next step is that it has to be approved by the ACS board, and I'm really hopeful that it will be. The point is, is that uh, she will be included in this, in this resource that educators and teachers can use right in the classroom. So with that, I just want to say that Dr. Green is an absolute inspiration uh, to me and so many others. She made significant contributions uh, in the field of chemistry, and I firmly believe that these narrative films really have a, an important academic value, right? And so it's a way you can incorporate these into the curriculum, really to address diversity, equity, and inclusion. And with that, I'll close, and thank you very much for your time.